All right, how's everybody doing today? Hotep, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecture writer, and, and historian. It is Saturday, October 2nd, 2021, and we are live. So I just wanted to uh, come on for a few minutes and talk about a new 10-week online course uh, that I teach on Saturdays. And we deal with history after the Civil War ended, basically after the Civil War ended. And we look at 1865 to uh, 1968, okay? So I want to do a quick recap of some events that led up to the Civil War taking place. And um, we teach the class normally 12 noon on Saturdays. It's a 10 week online course from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement of Black Power, 1865 to 1968. The day will start a little after one o'clock. But um, last week in our class last week, uh, some of the things we talked about were uh, that Abraham Lincoln was not a abolitionist. Uh, we dealt with some facts about Lincoln and the uh, Civil War. We talked about the Emancipation Proclamation, January 1st, 1863, and the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation as well uh, of uh, September 22nd, 1862. Okay. And we're looking at history leading up to the Civil War taking place. Now, we do this class live. All the sessions are recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. Okay. Um, and we know the uh, Civil War is 1861 to 1865. And we start out looking at some events leading up to the Civil War so we can better understand it. Uh, we talked about the Amistad slave ship case of uh, 1841 uh, in the Amistad and Joseph St. Q and, and how those Africans won their freedom in the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, we talked about the Compensated Emancipation Act, the Compensated Emancipation Act of uh, 1862 that paid reparations to or paid compensation to uh, slave owners in Washington, D.C. only. This was April 16, 1862, that this bill was uh, signed into law uh, by President Abraham Lincoln. OK, so a lot of people don't know this. Now, I, I hear I see some people misstating uh, actually what happened and say that slave owners in general received uh, reparations. No, that's not true. That was just uh, slave owners in uh, Washington, D.C. OK, the Compensated Emancipation Act of 1862. Uh, Zen Education Project has some information on that. And the uh, slave owners were compensated up to $300 per slave. Um, the enslaved Africans didn't get anything. So we take you throughout history. We take you throughout history to uh, look and see what happened uh, after uh, slavery ended. We look at specifically 1865 to 1968. Uh, each class we go through and analyze an approximately 10 year uh, period of history and look at the laws and policies that were put in place and and how political power was taken back after a uh, reconstruction ends also in 1877 in efforts to lock African Americans out of voting, uh, lock us out of political power. Uh, you have white supremacists rewriting the state constitutions uh, as well. Um, so we uh, go through and look at history chronologically. Some of the things that we've discussed, uh, we looked at the Louisiana Purchase of 1803, uh, where the U.S. Uh, basically doubled their territory um, in, the, in the land that they're getting from France, 828,000 square miles of land. And this basically doubled the territory of the U.S. Uh, we're going to go through and look at the Reconstruction Era, uh, 1865 to 1877. And you have African-Americans acquiring land, uh, voting, uh, African-American men voting, get it elected in political office. There's going to be about 2000 African-Americans who are going to be elected into political office. We're getting elected in the state legislatures also. Um, you're going to have this this time where where uh, uh, 
coming out of slavery and trying to make advances, uh, economic advances, uh, political advances, etc. Some of the other things that we look at, so we look at the Louisiana Purchase, we look at the Mexican-American War, 1846, 1848. This is something that's going to lead to the uh, Civil War taking place. And the result of the Mexican-American War, because of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo of 1848, the U.S. gets the territory that uh, makes up uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Nevada. And uh, that territory is uh, going to expand the territory of the U.S. And Mexico was going to lose one third of their territory, okay, as a result of uh, Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, okay? So what's going to take place is that this is going to then lead to what's known as the um, Compromise of 1850. The Compromise of 1850 consists of five bills. And they're trying to organize that new territory that um, that they got from Mexico. And, and what we're looking at is the result of European expansion. And we're looking at manifest destiny. OK, and manifest destiny is this idea is this ideology that um, Europeans are ordained, basically ordained by God to spread capitalism democracy and they want to take over the entire north american continent okay they want to take over the entire north american continent and you're going to see these when you, when you study the relationship between the u.s and mexico we see these conflicts going even before the mexican-american war because when we look at texas Texas is going to win its independence from Mexico in 1836. And Mexico won its independence from Spain about 18, uh, right around 1828 or so. And Texas is then going to come into the Union, the United States, come into the Union as a slave holding state in 1845. What we see going on right now in Texas is a continuation of 1836 1845 but also 1876 in the texas state constitution and they're putting policies in place like purity of the ballot box and, and trying to restrict african-americans being able to vote we see this going back to 1876 in texas so manifest destiny is going to play a role in these policies that are put in place in the U.S. and the trajectory of the U.S., okay? We know the Louisiana Purchase doubles the territory uh, of the U.S., but also uh, the Mexican-American War, the consequence of the Mexican-American War is gonna have a big impact on the U.S. as well. So then the Compromise of 1850 consisted of five bills. One of those bills was the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, okay? And the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 intensified um, uh it, it intensified the um abolitionist movement but it made it more dangerous for one runaway uh, african slaves going into the north and it caused more than to go into um canada okay the fugitive slave act of 1850 you're going to have the kansas nebraska act of 1850 the kansas nebraska act what this does is it leaves up to the people who are moving into the new territories uh, of Kansas and Nebraska, it leads, it leaves it up to them to determine whether or not they're going to have slavery as opposed to it being dictated to them by the federal government. Okay. And this is going to infuriate, uh, you know, a lot of abolitionists, things like this. So what's going to take place is uh, as a direct backlash to the Kansas, Nebraska act, in 1854, uh you're going to have the republican party founded in 1854 by groups of abolitionists uh as a direct backlash to the kansas nebraska act and the republican party is going to be the counter to the democratic party at the time okay now contrary to popular belief the majority of the time 
that slavery exists here in the U.S., you don't have a Democratic Party or a Republican Party. Just, just the Republic, the Democratic Party wasn't founded until 1828. So I hear people calling in the radio show saying the Democrats created slavery. I don't, I'm not, I don't know where the hell you got that from. Democratic Party wasn't founded until 1828. They were called Jacksonian Democrats. Republican Party's founded in 1854, and uh, six years after the Republican Party is founded, their candidate for President Abraham Lincoln becomes president-elect November 1860, and southern states fear that Lincoln's going to free the slaves. So the first state to secede from the Union is South Carolina, December 20th, uh, 1860, which is then going to lead to uh, 10 other uh, states seceding from the Union. And we know that the Civil War is going to start April 12, 1861. Okay, so we have the Kansas-Nebraska Act. Then you're going to also have what's called Bleeding Kansas. Bleeding Kansas was armed conflict between pro-slavery groups and anti-slavery groups in the Kansas Territory uh, from about 1855 to 1859. Okay, and it's going to be somewhere around 55 of them that are killed. Okay, this is armed conflict, okay, between pro-slavery groups and anti-slavery groups. So we take you through our history. We look at a chronology of history of uh of we have to look at some events leading up to the civil war because we know people are coming to the class with different levels of understanding of history then we go through and specifically look at from 1865 to 1877 we look at special field order number 15 40 acres and a mule and how that land was taken back by president andrew johnson uh we look at juneteenth as well june 19th 1865 general order number three and separate fact from fiction by Juneteenth. We go through and look at the Constitution Amendments, the Reconstruction Constitution Amendments, 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. We talk about people like Sarah Rector, who became who was the richest Afro-American girl in the early 1900s. And she, her, uh, her parents uh, were of enslaved Creek Indian ancestry. She's in Oklahoma. And uh, they're going to get land because of those Black Freedmen Indian treaties of 1866 and the Dawes Allotment Act of 1887. And this plays into the history of Tulsa, Oklahoma and the origins of Black Wall Street, because a lot of those early African-American landowners in um, in Tulsa, in North Tulsa, specifically North Tulsa, where the African-Americans were living, a lot of them got land because of the Black Freedmen Indian treaties of 1866 and the Dawes Allotment Act of 1887. And Tulsa uh, and Oklahoma is going to have over 50 black townships. OK, so some of those people got some of those African-Americans got land from these treaties because the Choctaw, Chickasaw Creek, Cherokee and Seminole Indians all owned African land. Uh, they all own African slaves, I should say. The Choctaw, Chickasaw Creek, Cherokee and Seminole Indians all own African slaves. And they um, what's going to happen is. After the Civil War ends, uh, they enter, enter into these treaties with the U.S. government and they're forced to um, give land to they're forced to free uh, those African-Americans that they own. One two, give them land, three, uh, give them membership into these Native American nations as well. OK, and, and oil is going to be discovered on Sarah Rector's uh, land and she becomes a millionaire. OK, so uh, we go through and we look at uh, the Freedmen's Bureau, Freedmen's Bank, collapse of the Freedmen's Bank. We go through and look at mass massacres that take place, Colfax Massacre of 1873 in Louisiana, Eufaula uh, Massacre 1874, Vittsburg Massacre uh, 1874. And we go through and look at each class. We analyze approximately a 10 year period of history. And something else is very important is looking at the state constitutions that are being changed to suppress the African-American vote. OK, we see that Florida has the first poll taxes in 1889. We see even going back before that in the 1880s, we see different states like Tennessee, et cetera, changing laws when it comes to public accommodations and riding on streetcars, riding on trains, et cetera. Um, and, and then 1890, Mississippi State uh, Convention of 1890, uh, the uh, they pass the Mississippi State Constitution that institutes poll taxes and literacy tests. OK, and this is designed to suppress the African-American vote, the poll taxes and literacy tests. And this is known as the Mississippi plan and becomes the model that's going to be adopted by other southern states. And they're trying to lock African-Americans out of voting, lock us out of political power, totally take back these southern state legislatures, political office offices in the south. Uh, so you're going to have uh, Mississippi 1890 and 
the man who presided over the uh, convention, his name, he was a white county judge named Solomon Saladin Calhoun. And he said, we are here to exclude the Negro. We are here to exclude the Negro. This is at a time when African-Americans made up the majority of the population of Mississippi. OK, and then in, we're going to see the South Carolina do the same thing, basically, with their state constitution, 1895, Louisiana, 1898, Alabama, 1901. And they're going through changing these laws that suppress the African-American vote. OK, so uh, and then we go through, we look at World War One, World War Two. Uh, we look at Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896. Uh, and we go look at the Great Migration, 1915 to 1970. Six million African Americans migrate from the South up north and out west. We look at the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power Movement. We look at what happened to us after slavery ended. What were accomplishments that we made, acquiring land, acquiring farmland, things like this, but also the attacks and how the laws are used against us, home, uh, how we were largely locked out of massive land giveaways like the Homestead Act of 1862, the Southern Homestead Act of 1866, the Dawes Allotment Act of uh, 1887, largely locked out of that, two thirds of that land, uh, 138 million acres of land supposed to be redistributed among African-Americans and Native Americans, black Indians, things like this. Two thirds of that land goes to white people, goes to Europeans. So we have to understand what happened after this period of time after slavery and the laws and policies put in place to, so we understand how we got to where we are today so we better understand where we need to go from here okay and politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth power and resources and the writing of law statutes ordinances amendments and treaties their adoption interpretation and enforcement and um racism is a system of advantage and privilege distributed based upon race coming out of the ideology ideology of european white supremacy so if any of this interests you um, be sure to, we posted a link here. You can register for this class. This is a 10 week online course. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. Normally it's on Saturdays, 12 noon to 2 PM Eastern standard time today. We're going to get started, um, very shortly here. This is not on YouTube or Facebook. It's at an online school. Uh, but visit our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. Okay. We have the information right on the homepage of the website. Click on register here. It takes you to the next page. As soon as you register, as soon as you uh, go to the next page, click on enroll. And uh, the class is regularly $130. is on sale, $70. And you can watch the class as many times as you want to. You still have access to the full course even after the course is over with. So next year, if you want to go through and watch the entire 10-week course, 10 sessions, feel free to do that not a problem you can use this information with children i would say the information is pg-13 it's not we don't do a lot of a whole lot of it's not a whole lot of craziness and cursing and things like this i would say the information is pg-13 now this is a follow-up to another class that I, I teach and we have class number one of ancient kemet the moors and the ma'afa understand a trade this is starting up sunday october 3rd this is going to be 12 noon to 2 p.m eastern standard time 10 week online course same format this class here deals with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the uh, transatlantic slave trade taking place and then we go through and analyze the transatlantic slave trade we deal with ancient africa ancient kemet uh egypt nubia tanahesi ethiopia ghana Songhai, mali uh we do with the 800 year occupation of europe by the africans known as the moors and uh what leads to the transatlantic slave trade taking place okay so uh understanding the transatlantic slave trade I've been, I've been teaching that one since 2017 on and off since 2017 and there's so much information in that class um that i, I couldn't get to all the information like i wanted to so uh from the civil war to the civil rights movement and black power 1865 to 1968 this the, the second class picks up basically where understanding the transatlantic slave trade leads off and i wanted to be able to go through and analyze a, a pretty much each class approximately a 10-year period of history okay so we get a better understanding of this history and so that's why i had to create this second class okay so understand the transatlantic slave trade you can register for that one as well and uh, there's bonus content that you can start watching as soon as you register. 
Uh, that class is regularly $130 on sale, $80. That's going to blow you away also. And we do a PowerPoint presentation, have book references, articles, video clips, everything in that one uh, also. Okay. Um, be sure to watch our uh, show and listen to my radio show, the African History Network show. Um, we're on six days a week, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight, Sundays, 11 uh Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, 11 p.m. to midnight on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF here in Detroit. And then we broadcast on Facebook and YouTube. You can watch around the country, listen to audio podcasts, download the iHeartRadio app, search for the African History Network show. We have audio podcasts. They'll be uploading some audio podcasts today and tomorrow from this week. We've done so much. Um, click here, to listen to podcasts as well. And uh, all of my DVD lectures and digital downloads are available at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay. So also, if you like this top, type of information and you want to support the African History Network, uh, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Then also through PayPal, PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show, PayPal.me forward slash the AHN show. Okay. And this is our official Cash App account. Also, if you want to pay through Cash App, so you do, uh, like for the courses or anything or uh, lectures or whatever it is, uh, if you don't want to pay through PayPal and you want to pay through Cash App, email me. Let me know. We'll, we'll get you taken care of. But this is our official Cash App account, dollar sign, the AHN show, S-H-O-W. When you go to it, it says Michael and shows my picture there. These other ones here are fake African History Network Cash App accounts. I'm trying to get them shut down. I don't know who set those up. All right. So we have to get out of here. Uh, remember, the African History Network. Uh, and, and you can email us, AHN Show at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, AHN Show at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay. And uh, we'll post that here as well. So remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Peace.